Okay, so this is day two of Tale of 22. All right. Uh, and I hope everyone's ready to work <laughs> because the uh, I'll tell you where I'm at. Okay. Um, well, as you know, we did not really get a chance to analyze it. Um, we didn't even, I mean, we we found a pivot. Oh, sorry. This is not from you guys. No. Uh, <laughs> ignore it. Ignore it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, we just translated it last time. Okay. So I worked on this a little bit with Levy. Uh, and then we went through the Sforno and it was okay, but nothing leapt out at me as like, this is unlocking everything. And then I went through the Malvim and the Malvim has potential, but as we know, the Malvim is kind of like spoon feedy. So um, it's good. So like that's the fallback. Um, and then I did some other ones as well. Uh, but what I really like to do today is I really like to forge our own theory about it. And that should be our goal. And uh because I think there is potential here, but if not, then we'll start the album uh, and then we'll wrap it up next time. Now, here's something that I might have been the first person uh, outside of uh, Alator to stumble upon. Uh, so I was going to Mikros Godolos, and this is like, I don't know, maybe the fourth time I've gone to the Mikros Godolos until him today on Alatora. And I look and I see the Mi'iri. Hmm. Okay. And I I rejoice. And then I said, like, do they, do they have all the Mi'iri? So I, I clicked through. Yes. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes. So I'm like, what is the rhyme and reason? So I email Robin Novesky and I said, I see you have the Meiri, a bunch of emojis, uh, like, you know, but I can't discern a pattern. So he said, uh, we have, uh, I think he said we have 60 of them, uh, uh, Miriam, 60 of them, because he says, the Sidder Micros Gdolos is finally coming uh, about. So for the longest time, this sitter on this option here on Alatora has been gray and there's not been anything there. But now if you go there, I mean, it looks like they're still populating it, but let's go whole Shakris, uh, Krishma, uh, Barhu, and, uh, let's see. Oh, no, 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 Barhu's not there yet. Uh, so he's got so far the Ravan, who's one of the Rishonim who writes on Tefillah, but it's coming together. So he said he has all the Meiris on, the things that are dealt with in tefillah. Mm -hmm. So it's super, super exciting. I mean, you know, like, you know, Miri is 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 big in my world. So I'm just really, really happy that we have him. Sure. So yeah. So I, I, and we actually will not start off with Miri, but um, uh, we'll review what we did. And then I actually want to read the Miri's introduction because what he does is he basically gives us like a menu of, of um, like possibilities for what the theme is and says, you guys basically pick. Hmm. Okay, so so I, I want to like you know use that because I think it'll help us. All right, so let, let's go through and and and, uh, and review our uh, our translation. And again, this is this is a little bit dicey. Okay, so um uh, and we'll yeah, there's a lot here. Okay, again, like I said, hope, hopefully you're uh, up for working tonight. Okay, Lamna Teich Al Ayelas Hashachar means brother David for the conductor on the Ayelas Hashachar, the Doe of the Dawn by David. Um, oh, I saw something weird also by the way, uh, which we're not going to read through the whole thing. I was looking at the Targum Ksuvim right now, like five minutes ago. Uh, for praise concerning the strength of the regular morning sacrifice, the Korban, korban Tadira, that's the Korban Tamin. So I think it's funny that he says it was, a implication is this was like a daily Tehillim, you know, for the Korban Tamin. So I don't know what that means or where he gets it from, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, but Ayel Sashachar, that's what, like, you know, what, I mean, it's not an Ayelet, because you don't bring Ayelos in the uh, Mikdash, but Shachar, you know, whatever. Okay. So, um, Eli, Eli, Lama Azatani, Rachok, Mishuasi, Divre, Shagasi. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Far from my salvation are the words of my roar. Elohai, Ekram, Ekra, Yomam, Velosa, Ane, Velayla, Velodumieli. My God, I call by day and you do not answer, and I call by night and there is no stillness for me. The Ata Kadosh, Yoshev, Tilos, Israel. Okay. I did find out, by the way, did we talk about that last time about, well, yeah. about where we break it up? Yeah. Uh, yeah so I read it. Uh, Viata Kadosh, Yoshev, and Telos Israel, but the the Nikudo or the uh, Tommy make it seem like it's Yoshev, Telos Israel. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked at almost all the Mufarshim say that you have a, a comma after Yoshev, even though that's not the mm -hmm. Tommy, uh, even though some of them say the other way. So, okay. Bacha Batru, oh, so that means, um, and you, Holy One, who sits on. On Israel's praise. That's that's how if you translate it. Literally, otherwise it would be you, holy one who sits, and then you have to come up with some other phrase for Israel's praise. Okay. Um uh you, you say, for example, like the 
the the subject of Israel's praise or um I'll say again. I've said I see. Okay, yeah. Or like um what was another uh interpretation? Like um like this is what Israel says that you are the Yoshev Telos Israel. Like Telos Israel, like Ata Kadosh Yoshev saith the Telos Israel. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, and in, in you are for our fathers trusted, they trusted in you and you set them free. Uh, to you they cried out and they were rescued, they trusted and they were not embarrassed. Uh, you, I am a worm and not a man, a disgrace among men by the people reviled. All who see me mock me. They open their lips and wag their heads. The one who turns to Hashem, he will deliver. He will save him, for in him is his desire. Um, for you are the one who drew me from the womb, secured me at my mother's breast. I was cast Upon you from the uterus, from the womb of my mother, you were my God. Al tirchach mimene, kitsara krova, ki enozer. Do not distance yourself from me, for distress is near, there's, for there's no helper. Savavuni uh, parim rabim, abire bashan kitaruni. Many brawny bulls surround me, the mighty of bashan encircle me. Patsu alai pihem, arye toref visho eg. They open their mouths against me, a devouring and roaring lion. Kamayim nishpahti. I am poured out like water and all my bones become disjointed. My heart is like wax melted within my innards. Um, I didn't notice that the juxtaposes the wet with the dry. Now it's Yavish. Yavish kacheres, it was Mayim before. Yavish or wax also. Um, or did it say Mayim? Yeah, come on, right? Yavish kacheres kochi ulushani mudbak mal kochai vlaafar mavis tish peseni. Um, uh, where are we? I count all my bone. No, my strength is dried up like shard, and my tongue cleaves my palate. In the dust of death, you set me down. Kisavavuni klavim adas mirim hikifuni kaari yadai varaglai. Um, for dogs or curs have surrounded, um, surrounded me, isn't it? Is it savun? Yes, yeah, savavuni. Surrounded me, a pack of evildoers encircled me like a lion, my hands and feet. Uh, that's the the thing that I think Alter didn't like. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, um, they divvied up. No, I count all my bones and they look, they look and gaze upon me. They divvied up my garments among them and cast my lots, cast lots over my garb. Um, and you, Hashem, be not far. Oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Excuse me. Um, Ibn Ezra, by the way, says Ayalusi is not has nothing to do with um Ayalat, I think. Um, I thought it did, but I think others still do also. Okay. Um uh Hatsila Meherev Nafshi, Miyad Kelav Yachidasi. Um save my soul from the sword, my unique soul from the grip of the dog. Uh Hoshi Eni mi Piarye, Umikarne Remim Anisani. Um Save me from the mouth of the lion, answer me from the horns of the Ramim. Uh, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of a gathering. I will praise you. Uh, those who fear Hashem, praise him. All the offspring of Yaakov honor him. All the offspring of Israel be afraid of him. Um, uh, for he has neither despised nor loathed the supplications of the poor, nor has he concealed his face from him. But when he cried out to him, he heard. Um, from you is my praise in a multitudinous uh, congregation. I will pay my vows in the presence of those who fear him. The humble will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise Hashem. Your hearts will live forever. Um, they will remember and they will return to Hashem all the ends of the earth. All the families of the nations will bow before you. 
for to Hashem belongs to kingship and he rules nations. Um, all the fat ones of the earth will eat and bow down, all those who go down to the dust before you, but he will not revive each one's soul. Uh, um, all the, no, uh, about the seed of those who have served him, uh, it will be told of the Lord to the later generation. They will come and they will relate his righteousness to the newborn nation that he has done. Yeah, was that me seeing you seeing you shake your head? Yeah. Yeah, I know it's really, really intimidating, it's, right? It's also just like a lot and it goes all over the place. Yeah, it is. So we, we, here we have to, you know, when I when I did my first Tehillim Shirim and then uh wrote my how to learn Tehillim guide, um let me just read it. Because I have to listen to my own advice. Um, how to learn Tehillim. I'm going to the old blog because it's not formatted in the new one, I don't think. Um Oh, big. Okay. Well, I thought I said a whole paragraph about it's important to not get lost in the particulars. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. I feel obliged to. So, the, you know, this is in our, our four other mm -hmm. questions. What is being said in detail and how? I feel obliged to point out a rookie mistake, starting with question two. All of my first attempts at learning tail and failed because I got bogged down in the particulars. Um, I thought it made sense to approach them using the same method I used to approach Mishle. I started by raising all the questions and the difficulties on all the psukim, and then I returned return to the Mufarshim for answers. Since I had so many questions, I would feel obligated to read the entire commentary of, very, of multiple Mufarshim for fear of missing out on an important detail. Typically, this would result in me being overwhelmed by the sheer number of questions and problems, which would be compounded by reading the Mufarshim. The web of, web of complexity uh, would be too difficult to navigate, and I'd give up. Eventually, I tried going to the opposite extreme, ignoring all the particulars and attempting to grasp the whole, and it worked. I found that starting with question one would naturally lead to a sort of back and forth dance between questions one and two. I'd come up with an approach for the main idea, and then I'd test it by seeing how the idea was developed for each of the psukim. Whenever I'd encounter a question or difficulty, then I would turn to the Mufarshim for assist assistance. This macro approach was far more manageable and guided my micro analysis of the individual psukim. I would even go as far as to recommend intentionally not attempting to do a comprehensive job in answering question two. Focus on questions one and four and only address questions two and three as your analysis and interest dictate. As long as you walk away with a clear grasp of the main idea and the intended purpose of the parak, then your learning of Tehillim was a success, even if you haven't explained every possible or verified every idea. So we've been gradually shifting into like an analysis of all the particulars. I think because we had a long string of short prokim, so we could do that. And also because I discovered Sforno. Um, so, um, but I think here we would do well to listen to uh, that advice of keeping the big picture in mind. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's, let's go back to uh, identifying the pivot which I did not highlight and delete at the beginning of the year. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, see. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Pieces. Yeah. So what do you, what do you say about the pivot here? Trick question. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it is a trick question, but uh, yeah, no, you don't have to agree with what I said. Yeah. No, yeah. No. We need Ariel here to, uh, Lacanter to, yeah. you know, just to come up with a, Disagreement. Not yeah, that he is Lacan or saying like um, I need to like yeah, right. Wrong. Yes. <laughs> well, as we were reading through it, I was thinking about um well, what was I thinking about? I don't know what I was thinking about. Okay. I, I've been there. Yeah, Isaiah. Oh. oh, you're muted. I would say 20 is the pivot. <laughs> okay, 20 is the pivot. Uh hold on, let me turn up your volume. Uh, why is, where is 20? 20 is, and you, Hashem, be not far. Okay, that sounds like a pivoty point, but what, what's your um, what's your reasoning for the pivot? David was describing himself, and now he's saying, don't be far, Hashem. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, what are you going to say, Chaim? But like God comes down, God comes down, God comes up in multiple points in the beginning, and then that first half. And you, uh, Holy One, who sits on Israel's praise, right? Before yeah. God comes up. Um, I think I'm seeing a similar thing. Yeah, but also uh, in ten he comes up. It's talking about like dove is still the subject, but uh, oh, I should say dove is the object there, right? Right. Um, yeah. It, it seems like it seems like it seems like God is brought up more than just there. Yeah, I, I would agree. Now I don't think that that is a uh, just because I don't agree that the pivot is here. I don't think that that is a an off target observation. So I think we could do something with that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Ayala first. Yeah, Ayala. So also, I don't know, this isn't really a full pivot, but Sukkim 4 through 6 
stand out as like different from the ones before and after it because okay. the ones before and after seem to be talking about David crying out and not being answered yeah but those are about other people being answered okay good all right that I noticed that as well right so so one is clearly an intro uh so one two and three are David bemoaning uh how far Hashem is from him four five and six so and you holy one who sits in israel's praise and you our fathers trusted they trusted in you and you set them free to you they cried out and they were rescued they trusted and weren't embarrassed that's like saying that god does respond right then he goes back i'm a worm and not a man uh etc etc so so yeah i think that's a great observation so where does uh how long does that last the worm thing i think it lasts through eight you think it lasts through eight? Yeah, still talking about his uh his downtroddenness. Yeah. Okay, so it was back to Okay, right. So that's that's uh that was what you saw before that I deleted. No, yeah. <laughs> um I did see it before, I think, but I don't Yeah, know. yeah. No, it's good, good. And now you're seeing it with your own eyes. Through your own eyes. I'm a worm and not a man. Before I saw it through somebody else. <laughs> uh and uh, a disgrace among men by the people revived. All who see me mock me, they open their lips and wag their head. Then he goes back. The one who turns to Hashem, he will deliver, he will save him, for in him is his desire. Um yeah, that is in nine. That goes back. Now, 10 and 11 is a little ambiguous, right? I mean, it does seem to be describing, I would class this, where would you class this? Would, would this be uh, in the first negative yellow theme or in the second positive blue theme? For you were the one who drew me forth from the womb, secured me in my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from the uterus, from the womb of my mother, you were my God. I mean, it sounds kind of positive. Yeah, it sounds positive to me also, right? Okay, then... Do not distance yourself from me. So that's speaking of himself as distant. Yeah, it goes back. Uh, uh, seems like from 12 through at least 19, it goes back to the uh, the sad stuff, the negative stuff. Yeah, so definitely 12 through 19 is negative. Oh, and then I think, mm, see, 20 is difficult. Yeah. I think you could debate 20, Ayala. Um, I was going to say, starting at 23 and on, I also think is like yeah. praising Hashem, talking about praising Hashem. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to argue here, I think, yeah. I was I'm... thinking at 20. So that's like a Bakasha, 22. Right. And I'm wondering if that's like, to use RL terms, uh, a hinge. Yes. Uh, I think you. this is a valid uh, uh, candidate for hinge because on the one hand, uh, he is, he's not declaring that God is distant from him, right? Um, he is reaching out to Hashem and asking for salvation. And then that leads into 23 through the end, which is all positive relationship between God and him. You know, um, I think if I did have to make a decision about 20 through 22, I would put it in the negative because he still is distant from Hashem there. Mm -hmm. In fact, you want, sorry, hold on. I think 23 belongs here also. Um, Actually, no, hold on. Well, 23 is still saying what he's going to do, right? Yeah. Whereas 24... Actually, yeah, I'm not, I'm not well, sure. 26 goes back to what he's going to do. From you is my praise. And right, that's true also, yeah. In my vows, it seems like... Yeah, so maybe maybe we should... Yeah, I think it's a hinge. I think it's a hinge, right? Because he is... It seems like it. Yeah, because 23 like... is on the assumption that God will save him. Yeah. Right. Seems like 20 through 22 are like that's like a bakasha that's something. Yeah. Like, I mean, which makes sense. If it's like he he kind of goes into this dive. Yeah. Like 12 through 8, uh, 19. And then there's a bakasha at the dive and then it goes up from there. Yeah. And he's like getting some sort of answer. And that's a good module. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And then I, I can't help but think of Tamar's uh, one that one time when she said it seems like he's schizophrenic. Yeah. Um, like that's what like the first half gives me that vibe where he's going back and forth between the uh, positives and the, and the negative. Yeah. So um, I too am a fan of, of Tamar's observation of schizophrenia, yeah. but I think that fit because he himself there was saying you know seems to indicate that god is close to me and god is far here he's talking about two different parties it's true but it seems like it seems like then that's uh going back and forth between uh a certain maybe like view or understanding of god meaning it's true that there's another party that 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 is getting a good but if he was 
part of that camp, then he should be getting the good also. So mm -hmm. Dalka, right. why are they getting it? Okay, I hear, I hear, Maybe, right. Like, so um, it implicitly is schizophrenic, just not <laughs> not explicitly, right? Like he's not saying God, because the other, the, like, I'm great. And, and like God's going to protect me and like, oh yeah, right, right. Yeah. I, okay, so I, I, I would it's agree like with that. Flipping back and forth between like, I don't know if you want to say like Midos of Hashem or like different, um, maybe viewpoints maybe yeah no I, I think i think that's a good observation mm -hmm. okay so now we have two themes right or at least two um vibes right we have the i'm surrounded by my enemies and god is far from me and i'm crying out and he's not answering me and then we have um it's interesting these references to historical precedent mm -hmm. right our fathers trusted in you and then i myself trusted in you when i was a kid or when i was an infant um, and then now I'm in this bad state and then I ask Hashem and then I say all this stuff that's going to happen when Hashem does save me. Um, I think another observation we had, I forgot to read this. Isaiah said, um, last time I made like any other person. So why aren't you answering me? That was, I think on the womb reference. And then we also had an observation. Oh, did we write this? Yeah. Lots of animal imagery. I think that's another thing that we have to like take into account. Like what's with all the animals. Um, Let's just do an animal uh, collection here um, and see how many animals we have. So we got the brawny bulls. We have the mighty, uh, oh, that's the mighty oh, Russian also. Worm, that... right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, worm. Uh, the dogs are around here somewhere. Uh, dogs and lion. Oh, there's a, in a 14. There's 14. A roaring oh, lion. yeah, roaring lion. Uh, and there's another dog somewhere around here also. Yeah, yeah. group of the dog. Um, any animals in the second half? Uh, oh, there's 22. There's a lion, save me from the mouth of a lion. Oh, yeah, and the Raymond, the Raymond. Yeah, okay, all right. There are there are a lot of references. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, so that's just weird. There is none in the second half. That's interesting. Yeah, hmm. Oh, there is something though. Hold on. Um, oh, yeah, what is interesting, okay, <laughs> which I don't know how much to read into this. But it does switch to botanical terms. Okay, I think this is easier in the Hebrew. Um, uh, Kol Zera Yaakov. Okay, now I know Zera means offspring also, but then there was another term, I think. Oh, Oh, Dishne Eretz, hmm. the fertile. Uh, so I, I know we translate as fat of the earth, um, but uh, the fertile, uh, like, you know, uh, um, all binos, binos desha yarbutani. No, that's dish, dishnani, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny, actually, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the human. That's language. funny. When you said that also, I was like, well, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then I was like, oops, eat grapes. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Zara is mentioned uh, a bunch. Did you say there's also one in 22? Uh, 24. 24. But yeah, you think you already have that? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Hashem, ha, ha, yeah. Zara Yaakov. Right. Okay. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do this now. Let me show you the Meet Yuri's uh, menu, okay? And I think then we can, like, pick, choose what to work with. Okay, Lion, so let's... Brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I'm actually, even though there's a nice snappy new Meiri on the thingy, I'm going to use the one with the footnotes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Meiri says like this. So first he goes on the uh, uh, YLS thing. Yesh mefarshim shuhu shem le'echa nikle'a nigun. Some say it's an instrument. Kolo arev ma'od. It's very uh, sweet sounding. Maskil namuch v'akol ole ma'adma. So it starts low and gets louder and louder. That's why it's like an ayalis, like a or like a shakar, I guess. Um, yeah, ketosephisa or akar shakar. Um, not a bagpipe. That's a constant sound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like what? Right. We have no idea what instruments they had back then. Bro, was saying no amru. Right. It's funny. He says namuch. Is namuch? I guess that also means quiet, right? Yeah, I think it means quiet, yeah, not just like low. Huge horn that Gimli. Yes, I, I also was thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ravosenu Amru Lakochav Hashachar. So they say it's talking about the the morning star, which I don't know what that is. Ayala Ta. Yeah, Vchein Halo Azos Lo Azin Oso. Istila Mitinel. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah. 
Vishma Parshim Osa Al Knesset Yisrael, Vakara Ayeles, Kamosh Shihim Shilam, Bashir Shirim. Uh, I don't know if that's a God's name. Bitsvakos Oba Ayelos Asade. Um, Bhain Shakara Sham Hanishkova Kamo Shahar. So that's a term for Israel. Vakonas of okay, here we go. Vakonas of Israel, here's the menu. Kasas Rabbisino Alehem Ashalam Pirshuhu. So some of our rabbis, uh, that's in Yuma and Megillah, explain it to refer to Nevoah al Esther, the Al Yisrael Shayu Baosos Man Bagalas Bavel. So Davka Galus Bavel. Okay. The Yishma Farshim also Al David Atmo. Some say it's about David himself. Be Odenu Boreach Mi Pene Oivav when he's fleeing from his enemies. O Efshasha Amru Behi Lachamo in Plishtim, or when he's going to war with the Plishtim. The Yoshve Benov Chashav Lahakos as David, and those who dwelled in Nov planned to strike David. The Yazor Lo Avishai and Avishai helped him. I don't know the story. The Nemar Sham Az Nishbu Anche David Lemor Lo Sete Od Itano Lemilchama. Mm. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. Doesn't know if they are gone. Yeah, but there's there must be something there's else. Whole stories, but no. There must be. I mean, because like, yeah, because unless um, didn't we learn or unless, that? unless it's Shaul and his men who were in the your like dude who who ran him out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because Doeg was there. Right. Yeah. I mean, right? it, it, Shaul definitely took his men there, so it could be that they recruited people against David. Um, woe well, unto us that we uh, don't know. We don't know that honestly. All right. So he says, uh, "Nira Shahaya Az Bafachad of Askan Gadola." Kipasha Beno Ubain Hamaves. Um, I've never seen that expression before. It seems like he was then in a state of fear and great danger, like a Pasha Beno Ubain Hamaves. What does the footnote say? Oh, it's a bit reference to a Pasha Ben Shmuel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Vaz Amar Zem is more. And then he said the Mizmor. Okay. The Ikra Dvar. Main thing. Shihun Amar Ben Nivua Al Zeha Galas Arach. It's about this Galas, this long Galas. Vamru Lashan Yachid Al Ha'am. And it said uh, in a singular uh, language about the people, about the nation, Shehuk Ish Echad Begalas, which is like one person in Galas. The Tachas Hiyosam Ayelas Ashachar, and instead of being like the Ayelas Ashachar, Heim Bo Bachashech Gadola, they're in the dark. So instead of being like the morning star, they're 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 in the dark. The Ata Tamshich Inyan Hamizmor Lachol Inyan Shetirte. You can apply this to whatever you want. Okay. Ella should be klala who nimshach yoser yafel laklala zeh galas, but it, it it's going to fit better with the galas. Mm-hmm. That's his tip. Okay, and indeed many mafarshim say that this is about the galas. Um, uh, looks like he was getting some of this from the uh, Radak, but he also concludes v'ata him b'chashe. Sorry, uh, yeah, knesis yirav v'ata him b'chashe b'galas zeh kamashanim kilo him nishkachim min azavim v'korim min agalas keli keli lamas avtani. Sforno also says that this is. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's right there. Those, uh, oh, yes, thank you. Uh, all Galus Halaz, right on this Galus. Uh, I think Ibn Ezra, let's see if Ibn Ezra says this. Uh, Ibn Ezra, not there. What about here? No, he didn't say. Okay, fine. So I think we should either take this as about being about David Stam with enemies, so we don't have to get into the details, um, or it's about Klal Yisrael in Galus. Okay, and um, if uh, if I had a choice, not only because the Meiri advised us to do this, to do this, but I think that if this is associated with Esther, then that's also probably going to be um, related to Galus, at least when we say it, because we're we're uh, you know I know that was about Galus Bava, but I'm saying like when we're saying it here about uh, you know Purim is a somewhat of a Gullus related holiday. You know, I know it's going to be around in Mashiach time, but yeah. And uh I mean I guess with current events it helps all. Yes, that's what I was gonna say as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, yeah. Uh, was it for like we I, I went to the thingy uh, oh yeah with Ariel. Yeah and the, I think it was 83 is that the one that talks about all this all the countries that are around. Uh that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, that one yes gives, yeah I was thinking about that also on the way here the yeah. all the vicious animals yeah. and and the, the feeling of abandonment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oof. Okay, so let's get back to the big picture and try to unify the. Uh, so, if it's talking about the, the 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 nation, right? So then, what do we make of the switch over? So now, I think the switch over four, five, and six fit in very smoothly, right? You, are, the Holy One, sits on Israel's praise, whatever that means. In you, our fathers trusted, and in you, uh, sorry, in you, our fathers trusted. They trusted in you, and you set them free, right? Um, to you, they cried out and were rescued. They trusted and they weren't embarrassed. Oh, you're saying that would make sense when he switches to the uh, the um, Abu Yeah, uh-huh. right. So that's like a literal Abu Senu. 
uh, oh, of the nation. Uh, Plural? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Words. Yeah. They fail me. Um, and I think a lot of the Mepharshim, uh, and I'm only going to go to the Sporno because uh, that's who I learned, um, says, Mitzrayim. Bacha of Batra was saying about Mitzrayim, Shaloshinu es Lashon, oh, that's interesting. He says, Shaloshinu es Lashonam ves Shamam. They didn't uh, change their language or their names. Uktsasam. Okay, so he, he takes it. Okay, again, the thing I love about Sforno is he's consistent throughout all of his commentaries. So um, Sforno's theory. We did this. We did this, yes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, about. okay. As soon as I saw Uktsasam, I was like, oh, that's, yeah. I, I didn't remember if it was a Sforno. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you remembered it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Sforno there says uh, at the end of chapter two, um, um, so I'm just going to read this in English here. Um, uh, during that long time, the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed from the servitude, and they cried out, and their outcry from the servitude rose to God. God heard their moans. So Sforno there says um, that. Uh, they cried out in pain from their avoda. And their outcry from the avoda went up to God. Not because of their tshuva and their tefillah. But God was uh, zealous on behalf uh, or in response to the cruelty of the oppressors. Then mm-hmm. so God heard their their outcry, which is that some of the tzadikei hador uh, cried. So here in Tehillim, Sforno goes with that also. So you have the people who didn't change their language and their names, which I understand to mean like the bare bare minimum of like the cultural Jews, basically. You know, they were not davening; they just kept their Jewish identity. But that's it. Uktasim batchu batfaltemo. Some of them trusted and they were set free in merit of their trust alone. Some of them uh, cried out. So it's a different division, but they're still strata. Um, uh, some of them cried out. And after they went out, they trusted in you. Um, right? Uh, as it says in Yirmiyahu, they went after you into the Midbar. And they were not embarrassed because you you provided for them in the midbar. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I just want to show this also because I don't think we would have gotten this. Um, the thing also about the um, uh, the puzzle 10, which was the other positive one, 9 and 10. The one who turns to Hashem, he will deliver, he will save him, for in him is his desire. For you are the one who drew me forth from the womb, secured me in my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from the uterus, from the womb of my mother, you were my God. So what does that refer to if we're talking about the nation? So he says, not on nine. Oh, he does say nine. No, he doesn't say what that is. Ten. Ata, ata, bios ki ata gohi, ki ata mozi. So you drew me forth, mi beten, mi choshech shibud misraim. So it's another reference to Yitzhak misraim. Maftichi, ba'omrecha, ta'avdun es alakim al harazeh. You secured me when you said, serve God on that mountain. Um, so that is talking about Har Sinai. Okay, and then he says also, Alecha, it goes out of order, which is weird. Kagodos Roacha, Alecha, with uh, in accordance with the greatness of your arm or your power, so thrown out of the womb is Mitzrayim threw them out of Egypt, and then Umiaz Keliata. When do we say, My God, you are my God, Bamro at Yamsuf. Okay, so he's taking this as allusions to times in our history. Okay, so I, I, again, I, I know I, I don't want to go into the, deep into the commentary, but I think that fits in with the Gullus thing, uh, that if this is about the nation, then we did have times when God cared for us and protected us and, uh, and didn't let us down. Right, so now he's saying, you've abandoned me and we're crying out and you're not listening. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to insult David, but I think oh, cool. for our purposes, this is all pretty much the same, right? Like there's Emmys around me. I, I'm, I'm calling out, you're not helping me. So I don't think we really need to focus on that. I think what we need to focus on is what happens in the second half and how does he make the transition, right? Or, or does he make the transition? I mean, you know, it's saying what will happen 
but like it seems like a radical uh radical tra transition here yeah Ayala. okay so just some random thoughts that i was thinking sure. about first of all the use of like all the animals and maybe the plant stuff at the end also mm -hmm. and like the womanology whatever um like what isaiah was saying similar to that i guess yeah it reminds me a lot of like creation of like hashem created the natural world <laughs> specifically and like everything else and was created for a purpose mm -hmm. and it seems like that purpose is not being fulfilled and that's uh -huh. why of is like crying out so much and then maybe the that's end true. is kind of like one of those like segue program where it's like well we kind of have to like see what the purpose is and be able to like commit to fulfilling that if we want it to actually happen okay yeah i was thinking oh. similar thing for the for the uh for the end of the, the parrot go back to the creation thing though where are you seeing that in the um uh in in the parrot the so i guess i was thinking this originally yeah. when i was thinking of the parrot of like david speaking this of himself and i think the has like nine ten and eleven yeah more is that like originally like immediately from birth hashem is his god and he's like like a, i guess a human being like that's the state that we're in is that like uh -huh. we're fully dependent on Hashem upon okay. birth and he is our God. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate state of dependence there. Yeah. Isaiah? I'm just thinking about the like relationship between what the, what he's mentioning about what happened in the past with the nation yeah. and like the fact that they're crying out now and that God should save them yeah. is like, maybe that is say, saying like David, David saying, like, in the past, the time when the nation was saved is when they were crying out and they recognized that Hashem needed to save them, and then Hashem saved them, like, in Mitzrayim. Right. So, like, maybe he's saying, like, naturally, it seems like from that, that this is the time now when we should be saved. It's now that we're recognizing Hashem should save us and we're crying out to him, like, now is when naturally Hashem should save us. Right. Like, that's how it works. Yeah, and so that is really highlighting the problem because he's saying that we are calling out and God is not saving us, right? Is that what you're saying? Like he's that, that's well, he, part of the problem. I guess it's part of the problem. I guess it's also like maybe just he's recognizing like like this is how it goes. Like we cry out because oh, Hashem needs to save us, uh, and now what's going to happen next is Hashem is going to save us. Uh -huh. Like I don't know if he's saying that. I don't know which one he's saying, whether it's a problem or whether he's saying this is okay. what's going to be kind of yeah. but yeah right yeah i see how you can read it that way yeah it's uh who said something else like that uh chat gpt4 when i was talking with him on the way here um it was saying that based uh based on the malvin uh saying it, it used this phrase like um that um that there is a cyclical nature of our calling out to hashem and uh and that instead of viewing that i'm now i'm saying instead of viewing that as like an aberration then viewing that as part of how it goes. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not saying that I can, I'm committed to that reading, but like I could see it being as like him highlighting the problem or him realizing that this is part of the cycle. Or maybe in the first half, he's pointing it as a problem and the second half, it's part of the, it's like a cycle. Yeah, Chaim? The one comment and then a, a, a pattern that I'm seeing. Yeah. One is that this being the Esther Peric, it's almost like ironic that he says at some point, uh, he ignores his, he conceals his face from him, like literally yeah. like Hester Potter. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but then also I noticed uh, from 23 through 32, so the second half, um, and this is maybe getting to a little bit of what uh, Isaiah was getting to. So it seems like part of the reason that David is saying that Hashem should, should save him, us, is because of some sort of future promise he's giving. Like, I will declare yeah. him. And then I also noticed there's a pattern where it goes from David talking to Hashem and kind of giving a like a um, like one of those future promises, and then him talking to the people, yeah, and saying, "Now this is what you should do," and then no, right. this is what they're going to do, and this is right. So he says, "Like I'll declare your name to my brethren, miss of right." So that's that's the God, yeah. And those who fear Hashem praise Him, like this is what you, you guys should do, right? Right. Um, and then it goes back, and then sorry, then he's still talking to them uh, in twenty five, and then twenty six. It goes back to uh, Hashem. He's saying, like, it's it not just going to be me. It's going to be like, in the, and he goes from the midst of my bread of my brethren to a multitudinous congregation. Right, right. Then he's saying, uh, okay, and then he continues. 
Uh, the 27, I'm, uh, it seems like he's talking to the people again. Uh, like almost like, I guess, through their humility, they'll eat and be satisfied. And that's something that they want. Um, and then your hearts will live forever. Um, and I think 28 goes back to Hashem. Right, yeah, because like you said, and then right. the before you, and it keeps like, uh, I'm not sure what to make of it yet, but uh, it, it seems like it, like it goes back and forth between him talking to the Am and talking to Hashem. Okay, yeah. Like this, I, this like double so I, I definitely see that. I want to point something out though. And I can't remember which of the Mavarshim I got this from. Uh, I think the Malvim says this, but I can't remember if anyone else does. Um, he ends up talking about the other nations. Yeah. The families of the nations about before you. And then I think the fat ones of the earth are also like not the, the uh, like in other words, the humble will even be satisfied. I assume that's us. Mm -hmm. But then also the fat ones of the earth or like the powerful uh, other people. So what's interesting is uh, what it reminds me of, and uh, um, <laughs> uh, this is not an Oslo Evosh, this is a like, whatever the opposite of Oslo Evosh is, namely that I can only find these Pesukim by going to the Mishnah Torah. I don't know where they are in the Navi. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, so um, in the last paragraph of the Mishnah Torah, he says, "Al yale al halev should be most hamelach hamashiach yivatel davar min hago shal olam o yisham chidush b'maisa brachis el olam k'min hago no holech." Right. So don't think that in the time of Mashiach, um, then anything will change in the nature of the world, or that there will be a, a something new in maisa brachis. Uh, rather, the world will go like its pattern. The zesh nemar be Yeshaya. What about when it says in Yeshayahu chapter eleven? The gar zeiv im keves v'namer im gadi yerbats that the uh, wolf will dwell with the sheep and the leopard with the uh, will will skip a, uh, cozy up to the gadi. I think I don't know. Mashal v'chida. That's an allegory. So what is it? In the other, she who yisra el yoshin levetach im rishe haolam hamushulim b'zeiv v'namer. So Israel will dwell securely with. I, I think you have to take it the formerly wicked of the world, because they're not going to be wicked anymore, that are compared to a wolf and a leopard. Shnemar Zeev Aravos Yishadim Namir Shakit Al Arehem. The Khazru Kulam Ladas and this. All of them will will turn to the true religion. Uh, they will not uh, steal or destroy. Ella Yochlu Davar Hamutar Binachas Kisra. They'll eat what is permittable, permissive, permitted uh in pleasantness. With Israel, Shnemar says, "V'arye kabachar yochal tevin." A lion will uh, eat straw like a uh, like a, a, a bull, right? Uh, like cattle. So maybe I'm just thinking about that from the um, the animal mashalim, but it does sound like that's what he's describing here because he's saying all of these animals are surrounding me to uh, like in a predatorial way, but then we are all going to eat from the land. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that is a really good uh, that is a really good mashal. Like all of us are going to be eating. From from the land, so it does seem to be talking about a change that's going to happen in the most Mashiach. And you're saying eat here is a muscle for Yehudi or something like that. Uh, Probably eat and be satisfied. Yeah, or literal eating. I mean, like you know, like like thriving, like you know, benefiting off of uh, the the well, Tova Hashem, you know. Except for thirty, all the fat ones of the earth will eat and bow down. Like, right, meaning well, I think that's a, isn't that a description of what the Rama was saying is that they will all be close to the Das Ms and eat. Where is it that? So I'm saying like like th this is not Yidiyas Hashem, right? This is like they'll actually eat. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Right. He's not decoding the muscle with another muscle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's how I took it. Yeah, but... right. No. Um, and, and yeah, he says later on also about the um, about well, the physical stuff. Does that mean literal eating or does that just mean like uh, another, uh, like, meaning you're saying that that they will eat is is... Like literally, they're going to eat like like kosher, or that like their actions will be. No, that I, I, that, that they will. Uh, where does he say it? Um, what he says off our. Yeah. Uh, at that time, there won't be any famine, war, jealousy, or competition. Shatova mushpas harbe. Uh, the good will be abundant. V'chol hama adani matuim ka'afar. All uh, delicacies will be um, found or prevalent like the uh, common, like the dust. V'lo yihi eisa kololam el ladas Hashem bovad. And everyone will only be involved in a knowledge of God. So in other words, there is going to be uh, abundant uh, tova, you know, um, uh, you know, like physical tova as well. So I, I assume that, that that's what he means, that they will eat, but then they'll also bow down. I mean, they'll recognize, um, you know, Hashem. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't know if this. I'm sure someone says that this is a reference to Chiesa Yeah, right. It that they. It has to be. Yeah. But that I mean that whole second half of that puzzle doesn't really make sense. Like I, I can't make. Oh, who are you, Walter? <laughs> yeah. At that, at that, wait, did, did did he say that? On this I think he said this. Yeah. What was that line? Let's, let's read that line again. Word salad. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, beginning with this phrase. Uh, in. Whose life is undone? Mm -hmm. I gotta. Yeah, everything in the Hebrew through the end of the next verse and the psalm is opaque, bearing the look of a word salad tossed by a bewildered scribe. Ah, ah. Oh, that is in, I can't make sense of it at this point. Yeah, really uh, that is that. starting from, yeah, that, that was Puzzle 30. Is that what we were talking about before? Uh, and no, Puzzle 30, yeah. Yeah, 30, yeah. yeah. All those who go down to their dust before the bomb. But, but let's, just, let, let's just assume, okay, for, for the time being, that this is describing some sort of state of world peace, okay? So, and let's assume that that's not the Chiddush, okay? Because we, we know that from all the Nvim, that there's gonna be world peace. What I wanna understand is, is how to unify the feeling of desperation and abandonment and, you know, victimization that he feels in the first half, how does that transition to this second half? Like what, or what is the purpose of the transition? Like, why is he, you know, like usually, what, what's the form that we're used to? We're used to David saying, my enemies are surrounding me and God's going to smash them, right? Or my enemies are surrounding me and I have to do tshuva and then God will smash them, you know? Here, I don't think we've seen one like that before of um, that that the, you know, I have to, I do have to check. Let me just check and see if I can find any one person who says that the families of the earth is the Umus Olam or the fat ones of the earth are the Muslim, then I'll be convinced that this is a legitimate approach. So let me just look and see what this Forno and see if I got it from him. Oops, not mean to click on that. Um, okay, uh, what was that? 28, Yochlu uh, Anabim, so that's, oh, so that's 27. Uh, yeah, so I'll just read the same way. Yochlu Anabim, he writes on Shanabim. Oh, that was another thing, by the way, sorry. I, I meant to point this out. One of the things we forgot to do when we translated this is to remember that the future tense is also, it might be, it will be, or it might be, it may be, right? Uh, like, so So Tsforno says that 27, Yochlu anavim yihi ratzon, sheha anavim hanit kain begalos, afapi she'enam b'nei Torah, yochlu v'yispao la'asi lavo desi pukam. So may be your will that those who are crushed in galos, even though they're not b'nei Torah, that they will eat and be satisfied in the future and get what they need. But those who seek Hashem will praise Him. Because that's those are the ones who are going to get the real lion's share of His chesed. So the Obviously, arts are the exiled people in the ends of the earth. Okay, that is goyim. Kamashalan goyim is goyim. Oh, benifas b'tfus nosaf ov devodazar. Okay, fine. Alpha pishlo shav b'tshuva, even though they didn't do tshuva. That's interesting. Uh, let's just finish reading the end, just to get some shot in the end. Kilashem hamulucha umoshel b'goyim, kamochein hamelach asher yimshol az b'goyim b'hu hamashiach hu l'ashem. So basically the king who rules them, who's the Mashiach, will belong to Hashem. Um, because when he comes, then all of the Goyim who ate is consumed Israel will be humbled and bow down to Hashem. Uh, as it says, That's a powerful puzzle. I just want to make sure I'm translating this right. Um, and the sons of those that afflict you will come bending to you, and all those that despise you shall bow down at the soles of your feet. They shall call you the city of Hashem, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, that sounds nice. Amnam lefiam hamashiach yichru osam shikvar nichnau pein yichra mishen nafsho lochia shalasa tshuva. Okay, so it's basically they're going to subordinate themselves. Okay, so I'm convinced that that is about going, or it can be about going. Yeah, but I want to understand the 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 shift in his attitude, you know, especially if this is about us and Galus. Yeah, I keep going back, especially because of the last post. I keep going back to the shift happens from 
the like he's he's future looking right he's, yeah he's talking about what we're gonna teach our kids right what we're gonna tell them right they will come mm -hmm. like, oh, it's righteousness the newborn nation that right without you done right oh i didn't by the way i didn't notice that that's a uh, newborn and he refers to the born nation in Mitzrayim also mm -hmm. but yeah sorry go ahead just that 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 seems to me like it it, it almost has like a double meaning and one side is nice and one side is futile mm -hmm. and like the nice side is that he's looking again toward like the next generation or the next generation yeah the generations and saying like do it like save us because of that and there's also almost like a bit of futility in him where he's like i can't get it yeah I, i've been abandoned i you know i don't deserve this but do it for the future generations right that to me almost like makes me think of like david's Roll with like the Migdash kind of thing. Uh -huh. It's like, and again, I'm not trying to bridge that exactly, yeah. but like it just gives me a similar vibe of like, I lost out on this, right? But do it for the future, kind right? Of I hear that, so yeah. He's beseeching him, and maybe that's what the maybe the first half is is him going back and forth between what he's going to lose out on or what he's losing out on, or what the current generation is losing out on, yeah, and like the fact that like that's lost, but that, um, beseeching for the future, maybe. Okay, so I, I like that idea, and it is interesting how he does switch. I think in twenty three is the last time he speaks in the first person. Um, twenty six. Oh no, yeah, yeah, twenty six. You're right, right, yeah. And then, he, then he's talking about the future generations. Yeah, yeah. So that is an interesting thing. I wonder if that is a limud to us. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and uh, and suspect myself of projecting. Uh, and I don't remember if I talked about this in any of our shirim here or if it was uh, elsewhere, but um, one thought that I've had a lot lately, uh, okay, this is a side, side point, but I'll tie it back in. One thought I've had a lot lately is I think there are a lot of philosophical questions that, um, and I know I've expressed this before, but it's just been very prominent lately. A lot of philosophical questions that uh, are very perplexing, okay, especially having to do with the soul and with... Um, uh, like metaphysical issues of that nature, you know? And uh, I think in my naive youth, and by that, I mean, up until this year, <laughs> um, then uh, I kind of expected that it's possible to get answers to those questions within my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And what I've realized is just how arrogant that is because, uh, and the analogy I like to use, the example I like to use is, you know, up until the 20s or 30s, you know, in the 1920s or 90s, 30s, we had no evidence that the universe had a beginning, right? All you had was, well, you had Torah and you had the Rambam, you know, arguing that it that Yishmi Ayn is more reasonable or has fewer problems than eternal universe. But but if, if you told the Rambam that like, oh yeah, Rambam, like, this is going to be solved in your generation. He'd be like, says who, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think because we're in a world where things are advancing so rapidly, I've just come to accept that like, you know, just like, uh, you know, Rabbi Kiva lived in a time before the Ramam developed his Ikarim, you know, and uh, and like different people lived at a, at different eras when like philosophy was like in a different, you know, uh, Aram didn't have Torah, right? So like the, the feeling that there that that like the truths are within the grasp of humanity right now is really arrogant, you know. And that it, it's kind of like in Ashray, um, the shot that I really like in Ashray of Dor Ledoi Shabach Masacha Ugrosacha Yagidu from the Radak, I think is the Radak, um, says. So generation to generation will praise your actions and your deeds they will relate. So he says, Dor Lador, Afilu im Adam Aruchim, Lo Even if people's lives were very long, they would not be able to grasp your works in their lifetimes. All the more so because they're short. Ella, Mayeshlahem Lasos, Lati Kotri Mem, what can they do with the short days? Kidor Holech Vador Ba, one generation comes and another generation goes. Yesapir Zeha Dor Shaholef, Terim Lechto, Lador Acher, Hamasim Hanoraim Shor Abimehem. So each generation that comes should tell the next generation of the 
uh, the things that they saw in their days before they they go. And the might that they saw in their in their days. So he's talking about like the acts of might that you see, presumably like in Hajgacha, but like this is how science works also. No scientist is so arrogant to think that we're gonna solve science in this generation. Like, no, they do their they take their steps. Well, okay, Newton, scientists. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, generally speaking, scientists don't think that they're going to finish all the work of science in their days. They finish, they do their part, and then they pass on to the next generation. And they realize that they were relying on the previous generation. So getting back here, I think you could say that with uh, the uh, you know the attitude that a person should have in Gullus, right? Which is that like you know, despite all that we want Mashiach now, people, you know, like there is a real possibility that you're not going to see it in your lifetime. And so you have to stay committed to the <laughs> values of being, of, you know, uh, of, of, you know, praising Hashem in, uh, uh, you know, in your generation and like just knowing that you're building towards this thing in the future, you know? Can you guys uh, maybe talk uh, elsewhere? Cause I'm getting here. Thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right, so like that, that was what you were saying about the Mikdash also. Like David and Melach knew that he can't mm -hmm. complete this project, but so the question though is, is that the way out when we see our enemies surrounding us? That's a very grim thought, right? Yeah, like that's why I said it was like on one hand like futile. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's too realistic for me to say it's not true, or that it's like not. I mean, to me, it's like. Yeah, like right. we're not, you know, I was having this thought while you're talking, but there's, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, they, they say we're back in the land and this and that, and there's all these psukim that you right. like made reference to, and like this is right where the Navi was standing when he said that you'll see women and children right. playing in the way, right. like that, and they're like convinced that like within their lifetime it's happening. Yeah, it's like it does two things. One is that to me, like like you're saying, it's a little arrogant, but also like denies that. Oh, okay. You know, things generally happen with a slow right. you know, evolution. Yeah. Um, and there's no reason to say that Mashiach's gonna be any different. Now, right. Like, all of a sudden, some guy's gonna get up and be like, here's the truth. And everybody's right. be like, yay, the truth. Right. Um, and like I said, it's funny because Robert Ginsburg says it all the time. He says that like we as a people are not ready for Mashiach. Right. He's like, he's like, I'm not ready for, you know, it'd be disastrous. Laws of like like top like like two right? Yeah. Just for like an example right you know, like we're not ready for that right as a society and yeah maybe again maybe in a hundred years they will be or two hundred you know? right so it seems like the best we can do is just kind of keep plugging along right and like hope for the best i guess you know like, right and, so and, and also to not give up on it's almost like okay here's an interesting thing it's almost like to say that Mashiach should happen during my lifetime yeah. is like an ego trip, kind of like I deserve to see Mashiach. You know? Right. But if you like look at it from a bigger perspective, like, <laughs> you, your generation, you deserve it. Right. Yeah, right. It's like, well, there's that, but there's also like, no, like the whole purpose of, of, of us living here is for Hashem's will to come about. And maybe it'll come about in a thousand years from now. Yeah. But like, there's nothing to say that our generation, this, you know, is is quote unquote like deserving to yeah. see it, you know? Yeah. Or that like it has to happen now. I right. Know. I, I mean, look, look, it it really does fit into the end yeah. of the uh, of the parak. I mean, let's just read that again. Um, I still don't know who those people are. The Dishnerers. Right. Right uh, about the seed of those who have served him, it will be told of uh, of the Lord to the latter generation. They will come and they will relate his righteousness to the newer nation that he has made, yeah. not to this. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It just seems to keep looking forward, which right is like again to go back to ego is like very anti ego. Yeah, you know, it's like very much not like, and we're gonna get it. You know? Yeah, it's like no, we have to keep doing what has been done to carry out the will of God to get us to where we are now. Right. And just keep going in that, in that, you know, uh, that uh, direction. Yeah. So let me just do a summary of this approach. Okay. Um, and just for last time, for, for, for next time. 
uh, for the door. <laughs> okay, so so the question we had, <laughs> yeah, the question we had is um, is um, in the first half, uh, you know, the the author sees himself as you know abandoned by God and surrounded by predatorial enemies. In the second half, he sees those same enemies um not defeated but uh but recognizing god and enjoying the bounty along with us um uh allah not allah like uh allah um, um you know uh hill uh hilchos malachim u milchamos 12 1 okay so how does this transition occur Okay, or like, what what are we supposed to do with the emotion in the first half, um, which is latent in the second half? In other words, like, how how is the second half coming a solution? So, so the perspective we're we're suggesting here is um, is perhaps the the secret to surviving the feeling of abandonment is the recognition that we might be living in a generation of Hester Punim, okay? But that shouldn't weaken our commitment to praising Hashem and and uh, and, and serving Hashem and bowing to Hashem, okay? Why not? Because that is what will advance the plan to the ultimate culmination uh, uh, point, right? Um, you know, we, we might not see the ultimate redemption, but we're part of a nation that will. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's a yeah, it's a, it's a great yeah. Point. And I think this is what I was thinking before is that it goes back to um, uh, not to be like an Evid uh, who's who ser who served not enough to have a problem. Yeah, right. right. That, that's exactly what it seems like to me, and like something that I know I've done. Yeah. Like, I want to get to Mashiach, mm -hmm. you know. It's like no, right. That's not the point of, of of you being alive. It's not to make it to Mashiach. It's not right. To, you know, even to make it to Olam Haba. It's not to make it. It's it's to live in line with your nature, like every other. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think to me, that's the chiddush that I'm getting from this tonight, which is I've had similar thoughts to Rabbi Ginsburg mm -hmm. that like we're not ready for Mashiach, mm -hmm. but I haven't had this thought of like I think your your comparison to David and the Mikdash is really apt, yeah. which is like. If David felt like, well, I didn't get to build the Mikdash, so what was the point? Yeah. That would be totally ridiculous. Yeah. Like, no, he did his part, and you couldn't have the Mikdash without him. Yeah. So we have to do our part in terms of whatever value we serve here now. Yeah, and I think I think just like you're saying, uh, the, like that last line that we're part of a nation that will is like if we stop doing it because yeah. we're convinced that we're not going to see it and therefore it's worthless, then it'll never happen. Exactly. I mean, if yeah. just gave up at once, then yeah. you're right. It, it wouldn't happen. Oh, and here's the thing also, is I think that like living this way is, is how God is not abandoning us. Okay, in other words, us being Obed Hashem through his mitzvos in this time is the answer to the question of God, you know, you abandoned me. No, the answer is he didn't. Yeah. And I think, I was just thinking about uh, Pasuk 25, uh, which is exactly what he says. He says, for he has neither despised nor loathed right. the nation before, uh, nor does he conceal his face from Okay, him. great. When right. I to him, that's yeah. Good. Okay, good. You like, right. You like, and that, that's kind of like the like the faucet and the and the, the cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. It's like he's always there. He, he's always listening. You just kind of have to, you know, align do, yourself. Yeah, you have to yeah. Do your part. Right. Okay. This is this is a good development here. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I think I think we, we came for for we, we got what I came for here, which is uh, an approach. Okay. Yeah. Good. So let's let this percolate. Okay. And um, I think what we'll try to do is develop this through one of the farms from next time and develop it our own. But I, I'm really really happy with how this is going. And it's also it is a completely new answer to the question of how do we deal with this national feeling of abandonment. Yeah. And I think applying it to the current situation is going to be really really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very good. What a pair. Oh wow. Okay. Good. I'm I'm really really happy. Thank you. Thank you everyone for uh for uh you know contributing here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Until next time. Thank you.